thank you all for joining us today at Pivot Me Live. Um, again, a new podcast series that we were doing um, just so we can connect with people real time. What we found was that the pre recorded, um, whether that's video or audio, um, five days later, it's less applicable. It's less, um, the resources might be a little old at that point because things are changing pretty dynamically, um, pretty rapidly. So we're doing the Pivot Me Live series so that we can connect with you real time, connect with business leaders real time on how how they're pivoting their business, how they're, um, how they're managing during this time, how they're elevating their staff, their family, their communities, and talk about some real resources, whether that's software or just personal resources that they're utilizing um, to get them through this time and not just get through this time, but even thrive. Many businesses are indeed thriving in this time and, and that's okay and that's wonderful. And we want to highlight those businesses um, just to remind us all that um, e-commerce continues, uh, commerce continues, e-commerce continues, and also to maybe give other business owners some ideas on ways that they can pivot their brick and mortar business, how they can pivot their traditional business into something um, that really is relevant in this time. So uh, without further ado, we are um, really lucky to have with us today, uh, Susan McVeigh, long-term corporate executive turned successful entrepreneur, um, founder of Sales Mastery Society and host of the Master the Sales Game podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today, Susan. Thanks so much for having me, April. I'm super excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, we have uh, known each other for a while. Um, I was really glad when you said, yep, I put your hand up and said, I'm happy to come on today and uh, talk about how you guys are managing this time in your business and also the way that you're showing up for your clients and supporting your clients. I know you, you two work with clients all over the US, I believe all over the world as well. Um, and I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. But first, talk to us about who you are, what you do and who you do it for. Sure. So I am Susan McVeigh. I'm a business sales strategist and I help entrepreneurs and small business owners who have never really had to sell themselves and love what they do, are passionate about how they help other people um, be able to sell themselves with ease without feeling sleazy or spammy or any of those gross feelings that sometimes come up when we have to sell ourselves. Uh, after a long time career in corporate, um, as an unlikely salesperson, I'm an introvert. I hated the word. I hated that word, um, you know, selling. It just made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, but I realized I was really good at it. I was really good at serving people. I was really good at um, connecting and, and really listening and um, hearing what was left unsaid. And so now mm. I teach this to clients so that they can allow their gift, their calling to shine and not have to worry so much about the nuts and bolts of how to sell. Yeah. 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 I love that. The teaching people how to sell who are traditionally not a salesperson. We were just talking before about being introverted versus extroverted. And that is a huge hurdle for a lot of people. I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm, I'm introverted or I'm not really good with people or, or, you know, that's not really my strong suit. And that can really get in the way of us having a successful business. When we've got this amazing skill set. we're a subject matter expert, or um, we've just got tremendous uh, experience in a field. We need to get out there and promote that. And sometimes that's a major hurdle. So I'm really glad to hear you're addressing that hurdle for many. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, ha I have both introverts and extroverts alike in, my, um, in the clients that I work with. And uh, I'm going to just tell you, if you have a heart to serve, if you are human, you are already you know, halfway there. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. So tell us about your, tell us about your, your work. Is it, is it virtual? Um, are you managing an office staff? What does that look like? Um, are your clients virtual and how has your business changed in this time? Yeah. So I, uh, when I moved from a corporate environment to offline uh, or to online, I health crisis. And so I actually couldn't leave my house. So, you know, similar to what we're experiencing right now, it actually is bringing back a lot of uh, memories of things that I had kind of forgotten about. Um, it's crazy how quickly our, our minds and our bodies adapt. And so I built a completely online virtual business because I was craving connection, funny enough, and I couldn't leave my house. So I do have a team. I have clients all over the world. And through the power of this thing, Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, and our computer have been able to stay connected. And so it, it has been challenging to figure out, um, but it is, it is possible. I mean, that's, that's how I built my business. There's been definitely some challenges right now with navigating 
the health crisis, right? Like across the world, um, some of the things that have come up in terms of like real life uncontrollable things, like when stores shut down, how much access we have to each other, mm-hmm. um, are simple, the, the simple things we take for granted. Like, can you get food? Can you get toilet paper? Can you get water? Um, so that has definitely been interesting to, to try and navigate and put at ease all of our um, kind of panic buttons have started to escalate. So I've, I've seen it both on the client front as well as on the team front. Sure. Sure. And how are you managing that, Susan? Is there, so just to give some context, some of the things that we've heard is um, some business leaders are sending um, messages to their team every morning. They're still doing 9 a.m. huddles virtually. Some are actually sending uh, quick video messages just saying, hey guys, we're still here. We're going to get through this. The business is going to weather the storm. We've prepared, you know, not necessarily for this, but we've prepared for a downturn in business and we can weather this. Is there, there's something you're doing proactively to address that? Yes. So I had prepared my clients for, you know, my background is in finance and I had kind of, I don't want to say predicted, but I had said, you know, things are going to shift. The market is going to shift. I don't know when that is, but please be prepared. And so I had also started uh, really strongly telling my team that now when all of this hit, Obviously, nobody has a crystal ball and could have really predicted that this would have been the the thing. So um, we have started to put um, a daily check in in our Slack channel with our team, mm. just to see like how are you doing, like on a scale of to five. Just touch base with us, and this is not anything related to the business. It's really just like how safe and secure. How are you emotionally um, right now? Because it impacts, it impacts how productive we are and it impacts how we can show up and it impacts whether or not we need to take more care and attention to adjust for ourselves. Um, and so it allows us to be more flexible with the deadlines and the requirements. We have pushed things back. Mm-hmm. Um, we were in the midst of a launch. And so just with everything going on, it had said, things are going to take longer. It's going to take longer for us to communicate. It's going to take longer for us to adjust. It's going to take longer for us perhaps even to reach one another. Cause I have team members all around the world. Mm-hmm. And so that's for my team. Um, immediately after this kind of panic hit, I said, okay, let's, let's brainstorm. Let's do some additional resources for uh, my clients and, and have poured into that a little bit more as well and um, set up some additional touch points in order for them to feel connected, feel supported. And for those that I'm not hearing from on a regular basis, I am sending out messages to connect and say, how are you doing? Right? Like, again, not how's the business going, but how are you and how are you feeling? Because, and I've been sharing openly with, with my entire audience and my team included that there are some days I mean, there's some hours where it's like, yay, I'm excited. This is awesome. Everything's great. And then, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, and I, I mean, I was um, sharing in Business Insider a while ago that I was not a prepper. Like this was not affecting my everyday life, but I do mm-hmm. have uh, health conditions. I am immunocompromised. And uh, the reality of it has made me realize I'm not going out anymore. And I'm not going to the store. So my husband is going to the grocery. I've refused to go to the grocery store and it's not from being fearful or panicked. It's from Mm -hmm. uh, just choosing to take steps that are going to make sure that I feel safe as much as I possibly can. And I'm encouraging my audience to really honor that for themselves too. Sure. I love what you said, Susan, about um, using the Slack channel and we're going to expand on the Slack on Slack because that's come up on a lot of calls, um, you said using uh, just a a scale of one to five. I love that for those that are maybe a little less communicative that aren't going to launch into um, one of of our earlier interviews. um, uh, I had one of my clients, Eric Miller, who was talking about managing his construction crews. And he he made a joke of, uh, he said, he said, oh, we're not really talking my team's not really talking about their feelings. So we don't, we just kind of put our head down and our helmet on. Um, that's a really great way for staff members that maybe aren't as going to sit down and talk about their feelings and what's, what they're experiencing just to say, Hey, one to five, just tell me where you're at one to five. Um, and then how we respond to that, because some people are going to want to talk about what's going on and some people don't want to talk about what's going on, but might need some allowances. So to your point, Hey, if, 
mean, I don't know how you're using that, but if, if five is really struggling, it's a, it's a big struggle and one's no struggle. If someone's at a four or five, okay, well, they're not going to get their report into me on time. Or maybe if they've got kiddos at home, they're really affected. You know, we have um, a six and a nine-year-old daughter at home and uh, there are days that they're more affected than others. There are days when, you know, I, I just said to my husband last night when my daughter was crying because her Hatchimal, which is a, a tiny little toy for those who don't know that talks really loud, I'll add, um, wasn't talking correctly, had malfunctioned. And last night she's crying um, and saying, you know, hat, Hatchimal is not working. Can we please get another Hatchimal? Can we please just go to Target? And I'm, I'm hugging her and I look at my husband. I said, it's not about the Hatchimal. <laughs> And so it's just a reminder that we're all struggling and she's crying over Hatchimal. Really, she's crying because she wants to see her friends and she wants to go back to her old life. And, and right now it's just manifesting in a Hatchimal. And I think, I think that's a lesson for all of us. Um, but I love the idea of just saying one to five, let's just do a check-in. Um, and you can talk about it. You cannot talk about it. But we as, as leaders can adjust our expectations, our support level and our expectations based off of what that number was. It's a great idea. So talk to us about some of the changes that are going on, some additional changes that are going on. Is it, um, we used to have meetings, scheduled meetings, maybe we've pushed those out. Are you guys still having scheduled meetings? Um, what, what are you guys doing and what, what changes are you experiencing now? We are, I mean, we're trying to keep things as normal as possible, to be honest, um, because I think normalcy and routines create structure but it also creates consistency and safety like mm -hmm. these are things that you can count on and so right now there's actually not a lot we can count on i mean i i have team members where they they can't find food like i have somebody in spain and it's mm -hmm. been really tough because they've been on lockdown for a longer period of time on mm -hmm. quarantine and there's just not a lot of access to the supply chain like that's just a reality sure. of of how she's living and so as much as possible, we're trying to hold to um, the regular routine. So we have a weekly team meeting. We do it right here on Zoom. And we've had to adjust slightly depending on timing or, again, if they need to rush out and all of a sudden there's a last minute warning, go and get food. Then, again, we use Slack to just let us know, hey, this is, I've had to run out. I'm going to be late or I can't attend that's totally fine. We record them all. They get uploaded into our shared Google Drive so that team members can go back and listen to it as appropriate. And then we communicate through Slack and through ClickUp, our, our main um, tools for keeping up to date around projects and, and tasks that are needing to be done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and let's, let's go ahead and jump into resources now, Susan, because you've mentioned Slack. You just mentioned mm -hmm. ClickUp. We've talked about Zoom. Can you talk about the resources that you guys are using now and maybe that you've already had them established because you do run, a, you know, a largely virtual business. Talk to us about the resources that are helping your business during this time. Yeah. So um, we use, like Zoom is our main thing. Um, I also have used, and I still use Voxer, uh, V O X. ER, which is kind of like a walkie talkie app. And so it allows, so whether it's WhatsApp or Voxer, um, it just allows you to deposit like voicemail messages so that real time, if you wanted to talk to somebody, you could, um, I suppose you could pick the phone, but again, because I have team members that are kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now I also don't know what they're doing. <laughs> right? yeah. Like it's not like they're sitting and, and working the, the entire time. If they need to run out and go to the groceries or do something else, then it allows me to just leave a message for them and they can pick it up whenever they need to. Um, so I, I really love that. Slack is uh, a great way for us to keep on top of certain things where you can organize it by channels. You can send direct messages um, and have private group chats as well. Uh, we use ClickUp as our main project management tool. Uh, and that's where we house most of the things that we need to stay on top of. Um, and then Google Drive and Dropbox. Okay. So we use cloud-based systems in order for us to be able to share documents and communicate and be able to pick up things that we need. Um, so those are, yeah, those are the main days I would say. I mean, we have a full CRM. I use Infusionsoft right now with, uh, with our email service provider. And so um, those are more, I guess, client facing, but our, our team needs to use all the different tools. But in terms of our team, those are the main ones that we would use in order to stay on the same page and be able to communicate. 
Wonderful. And, and again, did you have most of these things already in place? I would assume you had these all in place before this happened, right? Yeah. I mean, when I started my business, it was just me. Um, and I needed to figure out low cost, easy access, mostly cloud-based. Like that was really important for me because I didn't know if I would need to have access to something from my phone mm -hmm. or from the desktop or the, the computer or if I was uh, sitting in a doctor's office. And so that accessibility was really important to me. So most of these I did build out, but I, it, they've evolved. So I used to use Trello, mm -hmm. which I'm sorry, Trello fans, it doesn't work. <laughs> It doesn't work the way my brain wants it to think. So uh, I love how pretty it is, but functionally it just didn't operate for me. Uh -huh. um, and then I did Asana, yeah. which I love. We're Asana, Asana fans. Yeah. The list. So I, I say ClickUp is Asana on steroids. Mm, it's okay. like the next level up. It allows for interdependencies and things, but it also, if you're a Trello fan, you can actually see things on the board. You can see things on the calendar. Mm -hmm. um, you can see, you can assign only specific people to it instead of having everybody on the team. You can have it so that somebody's watching that task um, so that they're monitoring it and maybe they're not the ones that are actually the doers of it. So mm -hmm. I really just love how robust it is. It works mm -hmm. really well for us. And real quick to interject, so, and, and for, for people that are used to managing an office staff and you're going in and you have a daily huddle. So a lot of those kinds yes. of, you know, in-person companies, um, they'll have like a whiteboard up where, okay, these are the topics we're going to cover on our daily huddle. When you use a tool like this, so, um, Susan, I'll be ClickUps, we use Asana here internally, you can replicate that same experience virtually. So you can have a, a daily huddle board that mimics um, exactly what you guys did in person so that everybody's logging on and saying, okay, here's our daily huddle board or whatever. You know, I would encourage you to use the same names that you used in person, but use it virtually. So people can log on and go, okay, here's our daily huddle board. Here are the things we're going to do. And you can assign tasks. And again, I'm speaking to people that, that likely haven't used those tools before. So um, I'm not familiar with ClickUps. We use Asana, but same idea and we can assign it. So we've got um, daily huddles. We've got, oh, so internally, we've got a, a podcast board um, and people have things assigned. So some of them might be assigned to our, our podcast manager. Some of them are going to be assigned to our EA. Some of them are going to be assigned to our social media person. They they all get tagged in that and you can set dates too. Does this need to be due by tomorrow? Does this need to be due by, you know, next Wednesday? Um, and it's a great way to have a quick snapshot of what everybody's doing. And again, if you didn't have these tools set up before, there's great tutorials on this and you can do your best. And I would encourage you to do your best to mimic exactly what you guys were doing in the office to minimize how much people are having to learn, learn new systems and learn new things same titles, same, same experience, mimic that virtually for your team and they will get into the productivity flow quicker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for, for us, we still have a meeting agenda. Um, we use, what do we use? We use Slack. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait, we where do we Slack put too. our ours in Slack? Yeah. For our, um, so we have a daily huddle, like a daily stand up channel in there. And then we also have our weekly, like our agenda items. So that way, as we're kind of busy through the week, we can just throw things in there and then pick that up into our uh, Google document, which is sure. our meeting agenda. And so we all enter stuff in there. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that um, because I had teams offline, mm -hmm. that the more that you can use the same language and mm -hmm. just really think about how can you transfer this technology so that it becomes a new vehicle, a new way, a new methodology to be able to communicate the information, but the actual information itself, the way that you structure it mm -hmm. is by and large going to be pretty consistent. So the more that you can do that, again, the easier it is for your, your teams to adapt um, because it's really about making sure that they know the information, they understand it, but ultimately that they believe that it's going to work for them, that they're comfortable using it, and then they can continue to take the action. And that way you're not managing them using the technology on top of the other things that you're managing. Sure. Sure. And that, that leads us into our next point um, where, where we talk about opportunities. So again, just to frame it out. So tagging up on what you just said, this is an opportunity 
for us to clean up our businesses. This is the opportunity, as, as Frank Clark, one of our earlier interviews said this week, he said, get familiar with your CRM, get familiar with your inventory management system that you never really liked and wasn't that good anyhow. There's a lot of executive staff who aren't familiar with their CRM. They know it exists. We know we use Salesforce or we use whatever it is, maybe Infusionsoft. There's lots of different things out there. Um, but you know, you use it, but you never really go into it and probably should take it. You know, this is the time to do that kind of stuff. So whether that's familiarizing yourself with your existing software, um, adopting a new one, there's a lot of business owners that we're working with. So the smaller business owners say, you know, 1 million to 10 million revenue range, um, where they've been meaning to use these tools, meaning to use things like Asana, something for project management or, or Trello or whatever it is. They've been needing to do that, but hadn't actually had the time. And we just sat down yesterday with one of my clients and said, okay, this is the time to build the bedrock of your business now, because really it's always been a, we don't have time. We don't have time. Well, this is the time. And, and just to clarify, I know that we don't have all the time in the world. Um, I know, especially for people that have spouses or kids at home that aren't accustomed to working with, <laughs> let's, let's be honest, that level of distraction. Um, I'm not, I, I don't want to apply or sound insensitive to you have all the time in the world because the parents out there are going, oh my gosh, no, I don't. But, um, we have extended timelines right now. All the milestones that we want to hit may be a little bit more lengthy than they used to. So for those, those that are saying, okay, what opportunities exist? Just business processes. I mean, dial in your business processes. One of the manufacturers we spoke to over the weekend said, I'm taking this time to build my training platform because right now our training platform is clunky and it's very uh, person to person. One person has to sit down and get shadowed. And, and she said it really wasn't the most efficient way to do training. So now she's doing, I think she's using Loom um, for those who are familiar with it, but it could be a Zoom call that's recorded um, where, and you can do a screen share. And again, just to break that down, that's just walking someone through a process. That might be walking someone through the process of using your CRM, how you log in, how you move things. Um, one of the other businesses that we work with, um, they set up um, appraisals, they set up inspections, walking your team through that via a, um, a recorded call and then putting it into Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that so that going forward, you can actually be more efficient. So that's a sort of a business process opportunity. Talk to us about what other opportunities you're seeing out there. So whether that, again, shifting your business uh, processes, talk to us about opportunities. Yeah, I think it's both actually. Um, I very much agree with what you shared, April, as well, because I think this is where it, uh, the, the ish is hitting the fan, so to mm -hmm. speak, right? I mean, it's magnifying things that we probably didn't have an opportunity to take a look at. And so I would really encourage people that are like, oh my God, I can't believe this is also happening. Um, well, it, maybe this is a good thing, right? I mean, I'm looking at it as an opportunity to really look at, do I have the right people in the right roles? Uh, how do people deal with um, crisis or these, these moments? Because, and this is not to say that you're getting rid of your team or anything like that, but if you know that your business requires you to be nimble and agile, especially in moments like this, and maybe you just haven't had one happen for a long run, let's face it, a lot of companies, we just haven't had this happen for a time period. And so, but knowing that, if you know that this is something that is a really strong skill set that you need to have on the team. There may be individuals that you have identified or they self-identify and say, you know, I just can't handle this. I mm -hmm. can't handle the stress. I can't handle the pressure. Like this is not what I signed up for. Um, we unfortunately did have somebody on the team where because of all of the things that were happening and we already mm -hmm. could kind of see the writing, we had to have a, a sit down and she self-selected and said, you know what? I think I'm out mm -hmm. and we, we were going to have a more challenging conversation around how do we reallocate this resource right now? Mm -hmm. So things like that, your business processes, looking at efficiencies or inefficiencies, like what have you allowed to continue simply because it was the status quo? Like that's just mm -hmm. the same way that we've always done things. I think this is a great time to be able to evaluate. Is there a tool is there a system? Is there a process? Is there a skill set that we need? I have my team, somebody on the team right now, she is looking at YouTube for me. I said, would you be interested in learning YouTube? 
you have some time, mm -hmm. we can play around and nobody's really going to notice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things don't go exactly as planned uh, because they're, they're, as much as we are trying to find things, there's also a sudden flood of things to, to look at and to find. Mm -hmm. And so we're focusing on skill development. And that's something that I took away from being in a really large corporation with 80,000 global employees is that working through a couple of very, very strong downturns in the economy, um, cause I've been in the business world since 98. And so there's, there's been a lot of these ups and downs that I've had to work through. Mm -hmm. And when times get tough, we do more of the things that we're good at and double down on those. Mm -hmm. And we take a look at the areas where we're not as good at and two things. You can either pick up some top talent for really, really cheap right now. And it's not about undercutting people, but let's face it, right now, the market is flooded with a lot of really top quality folks who have been displaced, whether it's temporarily mm -hmm. or permanently, from jobs that they thought were fairly secure. Sure. And so, it, you're looking like if you were already planning to expand and you know that you can weather the storm through this mm -hmm. uh, because you, you're really well capitalized, you have good cash flow or you have good reserves, then now may be a good time for you to pick up a couple of people that you were already planning to fill um, and start tapping them on the shoulder, right? Like reaching out to those folks and saying, Hey, like, what would the opportunity look like? Start the conversation, see what the timeline is, see what the investment in terms of the salaries, the benefits, all of those things might look like, mm -hmm. depending on the types of roles that you're planning to put in. Um, and then skill building, where do you need to shore up your existing resources? Where do you need to help your existing team members or yourself? Uh, I love what you had said, April, like, where have you as a leader maybe not uh, fully participated or really evaluated how you can show up and, and be involved? And it doesn't mean that you're, you're doing all the doing, but I think it really lends to um, supporting your team mm -hmm. when you can speak the language, right? Like I've always been the leader that has never been shy to roll up my sleeves and jump right in and do the work. Mm -hmm. Does it mean I do it 24-7? No, because then the work that I need to get done wouldn't get done. Sure. But I think it's important for us to also, I mean, now's the time if you go, hey, you know, this role or this person on my team has really been looking for some additional support in X. Well, could you take some time? Is it you or do you need to give them some guidance? Could you give them some support? Can you make an investment in them by maybe giving them a course? Like maybe it's Excel. Mm -hmm. Like they need to get better on their Excel tools and techniques. I had a friend of mine who said, I need Excel. <laughs> I was talking about a client of mine who teaches Excel. And she said, please, please send me the info. And I said, okay, really? And she said, yes, yes. Yeah. And I said, okay, because they may have a little bit more time. They, mm -hmm. And that's, again, not to say that what we're doing is uh, easy, mm -hmm but we may have more flexibility. And sure. so even if it's an extra hour, imagine like over 30 days, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of time mm -hmm. um, that we could put towards learning a new skill. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not something that we usually have time for. I mean, that's a great way of, of using our time. Uh, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, I want to expand on something you said about picking up talent right now. There are lots of businesses, and, and this is really important to hear, there are lots of businesses that are doing well right now. And it some of it is industry dependent, right? There are, there are industries that have been very, very hard hit, but there are others that are still thriving right now. And I would really encourage the business leaders in those industries that are thriving. Um, there's a lot of people who have been displaced. Pick some of them up, even if it's temporarily, pick some of them up. Two of, uh, two of my clients, we were talking about how their business has picked up a lot. Um, and one of them said, gosh, I'm so busy. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the overflow. And I said, it is incumbent upon us to pick up some of the displaced people. There are people out there right now that unfortunately have already experienced um, layoffs. They, uh, they, they've been hit pretty hard depending on their industry, depending on the business, a uh, variety of factors, and some of them are foreseeable. Many of them were not. Pick those people up. And whether that looks like um, using a, a third-party services, there are lots of them out there. Sometimes it's just making a call to Facebook. Hey, who do you know that has this skill set? Paint a real, real clear picture, even if it's just um, you know an admin role that you suddenly need, describing what that role is and, and encouraging people to share it. 
you might pick up someone, you might be in, you know, California and you're picking up someone in Florida or you're picking up someone in London that has this robust skill set that they want. They have been displaced and they want to align with a company that is thriving right now. And that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a long term thing. It may not be two years, it might be six months. But I would really encourage those who are out there who are busy to pick up someone who's been displaced right now. Um, I think that's a really, really good point. So um, talk to us about some of the habits that you're keeping up. And again, whether that's business habits or personal habits, what are you doing right now? And, and actually, let me, let me pause real quick. While you're thinking of your habits, um, we are finally streaming some of our comments. So I just really quickly want to um, shout out to Ashley. It's great to see you on here again. Ashley and I had a virtual dinner last night. Um, so it was great to see you. Um, Armando's on here. Thank you so much for joining us, Armando. And we see Debbie and... It just says Anne. So someone else is watching us, whoever that and is. Thank you so much for spending uh, your morning or afternoon for some. Um, thank you for spending it with us. So Susan, talk to us about um, some of the habits that you guys are maintaining right now. Yeah, so I'll be honest. Um, I've had to rejig my habits because mm -hmm. hashtag real life with my, so my husband has been working at home with me since September. That was a whole adjustment. And then now with the kids home, it's been, it was spring break, but they're going to be doing online school next week. And so oh. you know, we're going to need to adjust again <laughs> next week. So if you ask me again next week, my answer will probably be a little bit different. So right now here in this moment on the personal side, the habits that I have right now is going outside for a daily walk. Um, I had picked up the habit of running and that was at the gym. And so our, our local gym, we go to the Y it's everything's closed. So that has not happened. We've been maintaining our daily walks with the dog outside to get some fresh air, to get some sunshine. If it's sunny, sunny, if it's sunny outside and to be able to just get the body moving. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's sleep, eat, and movement. Those are the main personal things, as well as spending time in prayer and meditation. So especially right now, I'm just finding that there's, it's funny because there's a lot of extra noise I feel. And I'm finding that I, again, as an introvert too, I need to lock myself in my bedroom and just give myself the time and the space to be all by myself. And if I don't, I am a worse wife, a worse mom, and a worse person. Like I just am not good to myself. So that more than anything, I, I would say I've had to put some heightened awareness on because for the first I, maybe five to six days, I wasn't really honoring the fact that I needed more alone time mm. and I blew up. Like I just, I, I and I had a mommy time out. <laughs> <laughs> which I haven't had to have one for a while. My kids are older, right? And so I was like, oh my gosh, I need to put mama in a timeout and go alone. <laughs> so that, that's on the personal side. On the business side, um, I've been doing more check-ins. So mm -hmm. that is a, a newer habit. Like really just, again, like we had mentioned at the beginning, checking in with my team, checking mm -hmm. in with my clients, checking in with myself and really thinking about, what do we need to do in order to pivot in this moment? How do we better support our clients? How do we better support the people that I'm connected to without being distracted? Because somebody had said to me, well, I mean, gosh, Susan, you, you have been online now for, what are we in? Like almost four and a half, five years. Mm -hmm. And even before that, I had the, the benefit of being able to work from home a little bit. Like I was a part remote employee in the last role that I had in corporate. And so I technically have been, working on my own since about 2013. That's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. But somebody asked me, well, can you help other businesses that need to go offline to online? And I said, well, yes, I guess I could. And I'm happy to do that as like a, a resource, a sounding board. And I volunteered that for my local community uh, with a lot of the local business that have been closed, my kids' mm -hmm. school, um, and thinking about how I can provide resources. And one of the reasons why I've put together a, a free mini course on selling during uncertain times, because I think it's really important for me to be involved that way. Mm -hmm. But when this person kind of asked, well, that could be a, maybe a whole new business focus for you to help people that are trying to get their business online. And I said, mm -hmm. I had to sit uh, because of this habit of like, let's check in, let's see what are the priorities and the three main rocks I really hold to Stephen Covey's like 
Mm -hmm. Three rocks, pebbles in the sand. And I said, is this a rock? And the answer was no, Mm -hmm. right? Like it was no, that even though it, I mean, could I make money doing that? Yes. Is other, are other people? Yes. But I really still hold to what's my mission? What's my vision? What are the company values? And how do we still demonstrate that today? And so for me, it's about making sure that we are um, increasing the platform, that we are increasing our leads. Um, and so the, the habits around the business is really maintaining focus, which I think mm. right now is actually the hardest part because there's so many things that we could do, especially right now. There's so many different avenues that have op- kind of opened up as possibilities. Mm-hmm. And me as a leader, I need to make sure that I check in and say, is that the best use of our time, resources, and effort mm-hmm. right now? Yeah, that's really profound. The habits of the business is maintaining focus. One thing we were talking about yesterday is that all the things that we we were headed for in our business, all of our our quarterly goals, our uh, you know we'll just say twenty twenty goals, and that's that's business and and personal as well. Those all can still happen. It's not that hey the the forecasting is out the window, the vision board's out the window. Those those don't need to be thrown out the window. It's just the milestones in between may look a little different. So the end result might be the same, but the path that we have to travel to get there that may have changed. The amount of time that it's going to take to get there may have lengthened a little bit, but just, um, I would really encourage people that, Hey, whatever you forecasted, whatever you are looking forward to, um, some have changed again, depending on the industry, some have had some pretty substantial changes, but, but maintaining focus in this time, like still making the next right move is, is so very important. So we talked about some of the habits that you're maintaining. Talk to us about if there's anything that you're intentionally not doing, staying away from, and, and again, give context. Some of the things we've heard is some people are saying, I'm really limiting the amount of um, news that I'm going to watch or the social media, or I'm, I'm really careful on um, how much space I will give someone to talk about their concerns. And then I want to actively redirect them to, okay, let's focus on the things that we can control. So if you bumped up against whether it's business or per- personal, the things that you're really um, staying away from, what's, what's on your no list right now? So on my no list is, so I've never been a huge news watcher and I found myself, it's like the, it's like the car accident that you just can't stop looking at. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And, and part of it was out of concern from wanting to be informed, right? Like sure. what are the real facts? And so I have decided that two things, I only go to credible news sources for the information that I need. And that comes from the, the health authorities mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to mass media. Sure. Um, and then my husband, because he does keep on top of the news and he filters a lot of this for me. So he by and large tells me the things that I absolutely need to know. Mm-hmm. And then once a week, I will allow myself to kind of touch into um, the WHO and the CDC and then the health organization here in Canada, mm-hmm. um, especially we're really close to kind of one of the epicenters being in, in, in located close to Vancouver. And so we follow the, the BC Health Authority. So those are the ones that I kind of pay attention to. And then the rest, I kind of limit. I'll be honest that um, I have had to just actually last night, I decided I am going to limit my time on Facebook. I know we're here on Facebook, but I'm just finding that the uh, a close friend of mine, um, I had listened to her on Facebook and she said, you know what? I want to spend more time on social media platforms that are lifting me up, Mm -hmm. that are making me feel good, that are pouring into me, right? Like making me think about things in a different way, rather than all of the circumstantial things that are going on that by and large are outside of our control. Sure. And so um, that's what I have decided is, is that I am going to continue to pour into others, be a light and explain the context of why I'm making decisions so that it can help other people make better decisions for themselves and they can make choices, Mm -hmm. but I am not going to be consuming the, uh, I'll be honest, I've been consuming a lot of information because Mm -hmm. I've been concerned. I have been curious. I wanted to stay connected and it has negatively impacted me. I'm, I'm an empath. It's I just been absorbing a lot of stuff, which I think, as humans, we all kind of do. So mm-hmm. yeah, for me, those are no's. I yeah. am no longer 
consuming as much as I have been. Sure. Sure. No, I think, and that's actually come up on a lot of the discussions too. Everyone is arriving um, maybe at different points, but we all seem to be arriving at very um, similar conclusions. The other thing is, is, and I, I, you know, if you're leading families, you know, you're a parent and you've got to be modeling certain things for our kiddos right now or families, or um, we, we spoke yesterday to someone who is both a business owner and a pastor. There are a lot of people mm-hmm. looking um, to them to lead. And it's very careful. We have to be very careful about not getting pulled down the rabbit hole. Is it rabbit hole or rabbit trail? I feel like it's rabbit hole. Um, don't get pulled down rabbit holes or trails um, right now because um, it, we can start to analyze to an action. We can start to not move yes. our families or our businesses forward when we're really focused on that. And to your point, things that are outside of our control. So we really have got to focus on what's in our circle of control. What is what? What can we influence? Um, and be very intentional about that. And that's, uh, you know, you're saying about your friend that wants to stay on platforms that are, that are elevating her, that are, that are lifting her up. That's exactly what we're doing here, right? That's what Pivot Me Live is around. Um, you know, our, our kind of tagline is DUE3, which is do you educate, elevate, and execute. And that's both for ourselves and for others that we're very intentional about educating ourselves and educating others and elevating. And that, that second E is, is so important right now that we're elevating because there's, there's lots of places that we can all turn to right now that will not elevate us, that are going to feel, help us feel overwhelmed or, you know, things are spinning out of control. And I would really encourage you. Um, and again, this isn't a stick your head in the sand thing. This is, um, this is, this is serious. You know, people have touched by our own family has been touched by this. Um, but I would really encourage you right now to take to, to find the places where you can be elevated, to focus on the things that are in your control and really lean into those, especially when we have businesses to lead in times like this. This is not the time to hide under the kitchen table. This is the time to step up. Um, I, I'm going to reference something Mark Keen said yesterday that that we are humans and we gotta we have to give ourselves some space and some grace to navigate this on our own. Um, but there is a gap and we've got to fill it and we've got to lead our people through this time. Um, so I, I appreciate your candor and your honesty in that. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask just on a practical uh, point for those that are, that do have little, that do have kids at home and spouses at home. So how are you guys navigating that? So is it, do you guys have a schedule? Do you have a, like, I'm, I'm on from six to noon and then you're on noon to t- tell us about the practicality of, of what you're doing. And again, it's dynamic. It might be different tomorrow, but how are you guys managing that? Yeah. So we, again, it, it's going to probably change when they go back to school sure. um, and we have more of a formal routine, but for us right now, um, yeah, we talk, we talk about it uh, weekly and then right now it has to be daily as well, where it's, you know, what's happening during the week. Um, when are you available? Um, how can we support each other? How can we make sure that the kids are eating really that's that's the most critical part for us Mm -hmm. uh and and to make sure that they have somebody kind of available and when are we not available like when are we not able to be interrupted whether that's for a a client meeting or we need like focus time i need to concentrate and do the thing that i need to get done so it's very fluid like i can't even tell you oh you know hubby's on from this time and then i'm on from this time and then i'm on back on and Mm -hmm. this it's really uh is and it's changing all the time. I would say that the most critical thing for us has been more communication within all of our family members, like mm-hmm. not just for me and my hubby, but also with the kids, you know, sure. checking in to see because we're not monitoring them 24 seven. I don't know what they're seeing. I don't know what mm-hmm. their, their friends are talking about. I don't know if they're watching the news or what's showing up on their YouTube channels that they may be, um, absorbing and interpreting in different ways. And so mm-hmm. dinner time for us is kind of our main check-in. Mm-hmm. We always eat together for dinner, even though we may be here and there. We don't have like, we all have to eat lunch. We generally eat around the same time for lunch. Breakfast mm-hmm. is kind of come and go. Um, but dinner, Matt and I, we cook together. Um, that's kind of, we work is done. We go and cook, um, make dinner. And then we sit down as a family and we check in and just mm-hmm. see like what happened during the day. What did you spend your time on? So it's similar to when they were at school, like what did you learn sure. today is kind of the same idea, mm-hmm. but we're adding a little bit of an extra layer around what do you, 
or is there anything that you're worried about? Um, how are you feeling about things? And so far, so good. Like they mm-hmm. seem to be okay. Um, but yeah, that's been our main thing is around the scheduling piece is dinner time. This is our, our window of opportunity for dinner. Mm-hmm. And then making sure that the kids know when we are and aren't available and who they would be going to in order to be able to help support them. Sure. Sure. And I'm finding that um, what I've been hearing over and over again, and that's been true in our household, is that oftentimes the kids are, are, are handling this better than us. And I think largely that's because they're, they're much more in the moment, like kids live in the moment. And it's us adults that are like, what about next week? And how am I going to yes. handle this in a month? And how am I going to handle Q3? And da, da, da. Like we're ahead and we're, we're causing pain today because our brain is ahead in the future. And if we just stay really present in the moment, um, there, there's often less pain. It's when we go ahead that we're causing our pain, ourselves pain and anxiety. And I think kids do that less. They're just like, eh, right now I'm okay. Right now I'm sitting here and I'm still having breakfast and things look relatively normal. I wish I could go outside and play. I wish I could go to the parks, but they're much more um, present. So I think that's one of the differences in how kids are navigating this versus us adults. If yeah. you could give um, one piece of advice, some words of encouragement to other business leaders out there right now, um, what, what would that be, Susan? It would be, well, this too shall pass. I know that, mm-hmm. you know, we're hearing that a lot and it may feel very trite, but having spent you know, 20 years in the market, like helping people navigate the financial markets, it, it, what comes down must go back up. It's just a matter mm-hmm. of when and how and, and, and how long. And so again, you know, talking about the things that I had shared earlier, if you are well capitalized, you have your cash flow and you have some reserves. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you don't make plans now, right? So don't, this is not the time to put your head in the sand. Um, as you had said, April is not go and run under the kitchen table and go and hide. As a leader, the hardest part is showing up is showing up every day, is um, being the visionary and being able to move even through uncertainty. And I know that that is hard when you are a planner, when you have, this is how it's supposed to be done and here's the plan to get us to this vision. And that may very well be a very, very dotted line. Like you might not even be able to see where the line connects. That's okay. What I would say is that as long as you know what the next step is, mm. you're going to be just fine. And th- the main thing here is that those that stop are going to be, and this is again from years of experience with helping clients navigate through uncertainty. It's only when you stop, it's only when you actually pull out and you make something certain that it is final. And so it, as long as you stay in it, as long as you keep going you will be able to pull through. It's just a matter of whether or not you decide. And so if you've decided right now that you are willing to pivot, Mm -hmm. that you are willing to make a go of it and that you don't have all the answers, that is okay. You don't need to have all the answers. I think that as a, as a leader, it's really admirable to tell your teams, I don't have all the answers. Imagine if you were able to put that collective together and ask them, what could we come up with? How could we turn this around? How can we actually see things in a different way? Because I'm going to tell you, your people that are dealing with the frontline clients and intimately know the, the inner workings of your business in a different way than perhaps you do, you'd mm-hmm. be surprised. You put that collective power in a room together and just brainstorm. Like If the sky was the limit, because really the sky's the limit right mm-hmm. now what could we do differently that might help us as a company, as an organization, as individuals and for our clients, what could we come up with? And so, I mean, some of the things that I've come up with have been as a result of asking my team, like, what do people need right now? What could we put in place? The selling during uncertain times was actually something that had spun off of something that my content manager had, had said, was, oh, I think pe- this is what people are needing some support with. Okay, well, how could I do that? Um, the profitable pivot workshop that we're putting together um, at the end of next week is is really designed what we need to do in order to pivot. And so this is kind of really timely that uh, mm-hmm. we're talking here because I think it's really important that people understand you don't need to make huge decisions. And it's not like you're trying to go from 
forward movement to sideways, like a full mm -hmm. 90 degrees or even 180 sometimes. I think it might feel like that, but I would encourage you to look for the one degree. Mm -hmm. Like what could you do maybe one degree different, one degree tighter, one degree more focused that mm -hmm. would allow you to feel more certain right now? Yeah, that's good. Um, we were having a conversation with um, Frank Clark, the president of uh, Lewis and Clark Inc. And he said, um, what's my competitive advantage right now? because you have one. What can I do that my competitors are not doing? Just asking those kind of open-end questions and even asking them to your team. I love that idea. Like a collective, hey, you're actually talking to our clients day in and day out. What do they need most? Um, just piggybacking on a few of our conversations. One was, what's our competitive advantage? The other one is um, one of the conversations that we were having. He said, it is in, it's in times of celebration and times of sorrow that these relationships are really solidified. And so, um, you know, we talk about how COVID-19 is unprecedented. And yes, the exact set of circumstances that have lined up may be unprecedented. But the, the, the feelings, the emotions, those are not unprecedented. This is people are experiencing loss, people are experiencing fear and uncertainty. Those are not unprecedented. We've experienced those before. And if we can draw on the times in our lives and the times in our business where we have experienced uncertainty, where uh, people have experienced loss or sorrow, draw on those and don't say, oh, this is new. How do we respond? How do we respond? Instead, think back on the times of your life and your business where you've experienced those emotions and leverage that. How did you navigate it? How did you navigate uncertainty? How did you help your clients and your, your staff navigate uncertainty? Because that, that isn't unprecedented. We've gone through that before and we can use that experience to navigate today. Yeah, Susan, I love that. Yeah. You've given us some great resources, great tips. Um, tell us now you've spent your time with us and uh, again, shared some really invaluable information. How do we support you and your business during this time? Um, keep showing up guys. I mean, I think that's really important. And, and uh, if I can leave one last point, uh, mm -hmm. April, cause I know, gosh, we could just keep going. I was like, wow, look at how long we've been out here. Um, <laughs> what you just shared in that last bit, um, I, I want to let you know that I did not think that I would have a business. The last time that I had a crisis, I had a health meltdown and a complete breakdown. And out of that was birthed this amazing opportunity to be able to serve other people in a completely different way, using tools that I'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. And so please know very much that if right now you feel uncertain as a leader, as a, a business owner, like I said, this too shall pass and amazing things can be birthed out of all of this. For me, um, how you can support me is if you use something, I am, I am a teacher by heart. And so if this was helpful for you, please let me know if there's any way that I can continue to support you, please feel free to reach out and connect and let me know. Um, I have, uh, you know, some, some free resources so that if you do follow me, um, I'm hoping that it's going to be able to give back to you. But mm -hmm. for those of you that maybe are interested in being able to learn a little bit more about how this business was unfolded, because perhaps right now, depending on where you are in your journey, you may be thinking, maybe I could start a business. Maybe my business could shift a little bit differently and mm -hmm. I can take advantage of a different opportunity. Um, I'd love to be able to share a resource if that's okay, April. Yes, please. And yeah. let, let everyone know where they can find you as well. Oh, awesome. So across social media channels, I am Susan McVeigh, M-C-V-E-A. And the free gift that I have for you is my exact six-figure blueprint, like how I started the business from scratch uh, almost accidentally and then created six figures in revenue uh, without any connections or an email list or any of that stuff. And you can find that at susanmcveigh.com forward slash pivot me. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the way that you've invested um, in us today and our community and um, loved hearing how you were navigating it, how you're getting your team through this um, and your perspective and your mindset on this. Uh, really appreciate what you've given us here today. Oh, thanks so much, April. It's been a pleasure and I hope you all make through it. We will. We will indeed. Thank you so much. Have a thank good day. You. Thanks.